Hello and welcome to our service at the Church Without Walls, streamed on behalf of All Saints Lockbrook and St Stephen's Borrowash. It's lovely to be connecting with you and thank you for joining us wherever you are throughout the world. The Church Without Walls service will soon start to include a new section called a Community Corner Slot, which will allow anybody to send us a short video or message that can maybe celebrate a birthday, an anniversary or a special celebration or simply to stay in touch with us and tell us how you are doing and what you're up to. If you would like to send these through to Moira, and the link will be available at the end of the screen at the end of the service. So let's begin with a prayer for today. Let us pray. Faithful Lord, whose steadfast love never ceases and whose mercy never comes to an end, grant us the grace to trust you and to receive the gifts of your love new every morning. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning's reading is from Matthew 22 verses 34 to 40 and this is taken from the Living Bible Edition. When they heard that he had rooted the Sadducees with his reply, they thought up a fresh question of their own to ask him. One of them, a lawyer, spoke up. Sir, which is the most important command in the laws of Moses? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second most important is similar. Love your neighbour as much as you love yourself. All the other commandments and all the demands of the prophets stem from these two laws and are fulfilled if you obey them. Keep only these and you will find that you are obeying all the others. People say the Brits like nothing better than to talk about the weather. In fact, they say it's our obsession. And perhaps uh, at the moment we're talking more about COVID and the pandemic's effects than we are the weather. Um, but nevertheless, I, I do think I talk about the weather quite a lot. And um, it makes me smile sometimes that when people who meet me find out that I'm a vicar, they somehow imagine that I have something to do with controlling the weather around us. I remember a few years ago being at a wedding and as one of the guests came towards the church he looked round at the lovely summer sunshine and then he looked at me and he smiled and said well done vicar! I felt quite chuffed. The problem is an hour or so later when he left the church it was pouring down with rain I won't tell you um, what he said to me because it wasn't very uh, flattering. Now in Jesus's uh, culture, they talked primarily about two things. Firstly, they talked about the Roman occupation. They were a nation occupied by a foreign territory. And then secondly, they talked a lot about the law and that's capital L. Now, the law meant different things to different people in that culture. It meant to some of them the first five books of the Jewish scripture. Christians call that the Old Testament. For others, of course, the law meant the Ten Commandments. In many ways, they dist distilled the, the, uh, the laws in the Jewish scriptures into just ten facets, the Ten Commandments. For other people, um, the law meant the 613 separate little laws adhered to by most of the rabbis in that culture. So it's quite a complicated area to be talking about. In that reading we've just had from Matthew's Gospel, an expert in the law um, tested Jesus as he was teaching in the temple. And the word test means to trip. He was trying to trip Jesus up publicly to show he wasn't orthodox. And the question he asked uh, was this in Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Gosh, that's a, a big question. Well, Jesus answered without hesitation, with authority and with profound simplicity. And his answer distilled his own teaching and all the teaching in the Jewish scriptures that we call the Old Testament. And this is what Jesus said. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. And then he finishes, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And the word hang there can mean, in the Hebrew, it can mean a peg. If you think of a, a peg with a garment hanging on it, on the line, Jesus is saying, on this small peg, these two commandments, all the laws that you can think of hang on and flow out of those two commandments. As I look around our society in the UK here at the moment, I see that many people have chosen to abandon for themselves any kind of overarching social laws, particularly with a religious element to them. And what that means is they, they make up their own morals relative to themselves and their own context. We call it moral relativism. So as long as they're happy and, and uh, they're not really bothered about how other people are, it's all about themselves and their own context. I, I think long term for a society that can be disastrous. And they do that because they say the laws that we follow uh, are all about restricting us and we need to be free in life. Let me give you an example of why I think that's a bad idea. Years ago I used to like playing rugby union. Uh, one evening the two teams arrived but the referee didn't. The two teams got together and they decided they'd play anyway. A bit of male bravado. Oh we're going to have great fun. What freedom, no laws. It sounded fantastic. But within 10 minutes, it was a complete disaster. In fact, really dangerous. Well, anyway, the referee eventually turned up and within a few minutes, um, we were playing within the restrictions of the laws laid down in the rugby union code. Now, you might think, oh yeah, but it, surely it was better before when you were free. No, no, it wasn't because the freedom meant a free for all. And having the, the rules there meant that we had freedom within a framework. And that framework meant we could enjoy the game. Actually, it was one of the most enjoyable games of rugby I ever had. But we, we were free to do that in a way that protected us and others. I think that's a, a lovely analogy of the, the moral laws on which Jesus's culture was built and which Christians believe are important. They're laws that give us freedom socially to interact and live with others, but in a framework. Now, the word love here is important. Jesus uses it twice. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul and strength, and you shall love your neighbour as yourself. It's a Hebrew word translated into the Greek of the New Testament by the word agape. It's a fascinating word. It doesn't so much mean an emotion, although of course it involves our emotions, but agape really means an act of the will. It's to do with our thought process. It's to do with the um, of self-denial and through self-denial and sacrifice, serving someone else who is in need. It's a fascinating word. Now, in Jesus's culture, it was really interesting how you could love neighbour, your neighbours, in a, in a kind of system of grading. And it went something like this. If you were an orthodox religious Jew, then you could love other orthodox religious Jews and they were seen as your close neighbours. You could love them well. Of course, all Jews were meant to love God. That was compulsory. So it was loving God first, loving the religious neighbours second very well. And then there was another class that we hear mentioned in the Gospels sometimes called the Sinners 
and the tax collectors. And these were the unorthodox Jews. They weren't that religious. And you loved them as a Jewish neighbour a bit, but not too much. And then there was a third class of people, non-Jews, Gentiles, and you didn't have to love them at all. You could shun them and hate them. Imagine living in that kind of society. Well, Jesus turns that teaching and that social order on its head. And he does it like this. It's recorded in Luke chapter 10. Someone asked Jesus, who is my neighbour? And Jesus answers in the story or the parable of the Good Samaritan. And this is what Jesus says. Your neighbour is whoever God places in front of you in life who has a need. Isn't that profound if you think about it in his own social setting? This was a, a love, God's love, which has arms and legs. It goes and does. It's a verb. It's a, it's a love that knows no racial or spiritual or religious or social or political or economic barriers. It loves because it loves and it cares. Now, I'd like to finish by asking the question then, how can we fulfil these two greatest commandments that Jesus gives us? To love God with everything that we have and to love our neighbour as ourselves. Well, firstly, I'd like to encourage you, if you don't already and you haven't, to open your life up to God through all that Jesus did on the cross for us. He died, lived a perfect life and died a sacrificial death that we might find forgiveness from God, that we might um, receive the Holy Spirit, the spirit of adoption and be adopted into God's family and know God as our loving Father and receive um, the gift of eternal life. Connect yourself with God. As we do that we can spend time with God in prayer and silence, reading the Bible, seeking to open our lives up to God and allow God um, to guide us and lead us. And then thirdly, I'd like to ask you this question. Who is around you at the moment who has a need? And how might you and others be able to help that person and sh so show them love? As we love God, we find a passion and a love for others. And as we love others, so we reflect God's love and passion for them and us. We're to love God for God's sake, we're to love ourselves for God's sake and we're to love others for God's sake too. And as we do that we can bring a radical transformation to the world in which we live. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength and love your neighbour as yourself. May we fulfil those commands in our lives, now and always. Amen. Morning everybody, I hope you're all okay. Well, before we get started with the story, there's a few actions I need to show you that I'd like you to join in with me as I tell the story. And I hope these are actions that everybody can join in with, young or old. So the first action, if I say the word love at any time, I want you to put your arms around yourself like you're giving yourself a hug. And if I say heart, I'd like you to make a heart shape with your hands. And if I say the word soul, I want you to stick your thumbs up and point them to your chest. And if I say mind, put your hands on your head. And if I say neighbour, will you point 
to somebody else in the room, just like I'm pointing at you now. Great, shall we get started? The Bible has a lot to say about love. It tells us that God loves us. It also tells us that God wants us to love him. It also tells us that we should love our neighbour. There is that much love in the Bible that some people call it a love letter. Well, a long time ago, when Jesus was on earth, a lot of people thought the Bible was just all about rules. Do this, go there, say this, don't say that, eat this, worship here. Rule after rule after rule after rule. There was a little bit about love, but mainly it was just all the rules that people seemed to care about. But love was all Jesus cared about. He came to show each one of us just how much he loves us. He loves us so much that he even died for our sins so we can live with him forever and always. There was a whole bunch of people who really liked Jesus' message of love. But there was also a whole bunch of people that really thought it was just all about the rules. They thought that following the rules was all that mattered. But they forgot that everyone makes mistakes sometimes and disobeys the rules. And then what? Is that it? One rule broken? And it's all over. No way. Jesus came so that even when we make mistakes, he can save us. It's such an amazing way for Jesus to show how much he loves us. One day, the rule followers wanted to know what Jesus thought was the most important rule of all. If we could follow just one rule, which one would it be? They expected Jesus to say one of the Ten Commandments, such as obey your parents or keep the Sabbath day as a day for God. But Jesus had an even better one, the best rule of all. And it's all about love. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. Jesus turned all of those rules just into two simple ones. Love God, love others. When you keep a Sunday as a day for Jesus, that's a way of loving him. When you do as your parents say, that's a way of loving them. Every single rule can fit into those two. It was just so simple. Now, what do you think it means to love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind? It really just means that you love him completely. So you can't just say that you love God on a Sunday when you go to church or watch Church Without Walls. You need to love God all of the time and in every way. And thankfully, Jesus loves us 
so much that he forgives us when we forget to love him and our neighbours like we should. Which is great news because every one of us could use a bit more love. Well, I hope you enjoyed the story today. And before we go, shall we say a little prayer? Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for showing us your love. Help us to show our love for you. Help us to share and care and help and love each other because you love us. Amen. Well, have a great week, guys, and I look forward to seeing you again really soon. Bye.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, who invites us to love you with all our heart, soul and mind, and loves us so much forever, hold us close as we bring to you our concerns and regrets and hopes for the future. We pray to you today for your world and all who live in it. We have not cared for the world as we should and have not always appreciated the complexity of your creation or how to support its wonderful workings. Help us to understand the ways in which we can change our choices and actions to support those with whom we share resources. May we consume that which can be sustained, use less of that which we need, and process our rubbish in ways that help the earth to grow. In days of continuing crisis and conflict, may we support leaders who consider carefully and make right decisions. Give strength and wisdom to aid workers who support developing countries in their struggle to produce food and fight COVID. Protect and guide Christians around the world who work to spread your word and glorify your name in difficult circumstances. As we struggle in this country to do the right thing in testing times, may our leaders grow to know you more and choose carefully which paths to tread. May the scientists and medical workers find ways to heal the sick and prevent further spread of the disease. We bring to you today those we know who live in fear and loneliness, those who are ill and worried for themselves and for those they love. We remember those on the notice sheet, those on the prayer connections group and those we know and love personally. Thank you, Lord, for your continuing answers to our prayers and your love for us. We remember those of our church family who cannot be with us today and those who join us through the wonderful Church Without Walls. And we thank you for the talents and dedication of those who make all this possible. Be with us in those uncertain times to come. May we indeed love you with all our heart and soul and mind, that we may trust in you to keep us safe and close to you day by day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, darling. Mwah. Well, in a few moments, this service will end with a prayer for blessing. A few notices, however, beforehand. These services will continue to be streamed every Sunday at 10 o'clock. But if you've got any thoughts on how we can improve them on new ideas, such as the community sports slots, please let us know. The web address for the church will be on the screen at the end as well. And there's you can actually access a copy of our monthly news sheet, which shows what actual services and meetings are occurring in church buildings. Alternatively, if you'd like to request prayer for yourself, a friend, a loved one, whoever, our prayer email will be shown on the screen at the end of the service. 
so please email us. Please continue to support and pray for our food bank as well, which is coming into more and more need at this time, which again, the information is shown on the end of the screen. So until we meet again, I pray that you and your loved ones are safe and well, and now a prayer of blessing. May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes, the love of God be reflected in your hands, the wisdom of God be reflected in your words, and the knowledge of God flow from your heart, that all might see and seeing believe the blessings of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love forever and ever. Amen. Amen.